Hear that in the background? John Henry by Do Rag. Do Rag. You know Do Rag? Bob Log. Thermos Mauling. Do Rag. Don't forget that. Anyway, what made Do Rag special, one of the things that made them special was their old, nasty, tinny sound. And that didn't come by accident. So, what we're doing today is remember this. Uh, box that I'm building the white owl box taking me forever well we're moving along we're starting to wire this thing up for sound it's gonna have two pickups in it one a coil flat humbucker coil that it gives you the sound that you're used to that electric guitar sound but that tinny background do raggy sound is brought to you this by this wonderful miracle of science called the piezo it is a brass disc with a piece of ceramic with two wires put to it. When you wire this up and put a, a current to it, it reads the current. So the vibration of your box and your strings is what that thing reads. So I typically have a piezo and a coil. Let's put one of my guitars on an amp and see what I'm talking about. Okay, remember coffee can guitar with all the signatures? Yeah, it has a, a coil, which is right here on the neck, and um, it also has a piezo embedded underneath the wood on this neck here. So you get two distinct sounds. By the way, there's a start to finish on how to build this thing if you care to see it. I'll give you a link right up there right about now. But using that neat, 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 neat sound that we're hearing from Bob there, we'll put that on the coil and see what this does. the coil but when you put on the piezo you get a lot different sound it's more tinny let's see what this thing does crank it up a little bit so did you hear that that piezo picks up anything you do so ideally you have two amps one of them's probably style, solid state or an old tube amp or something, and then a cheap amp that you hook up to the coil so you can get that. That's what a coil does for you. Back up. That is what a piezo does for you. You get to hear that miserable thing. Let's put it in and make sure you understand what a coil sounds like the same way. Is that cranked up? Ouch, that even kills me. Let's get to the bench and I'll show you how to put one of these in. Which guitar are we working on? Yeah, this one. Let's go. Oh, you caught me. I almost forgot. I always tell you we're going to the bench. When we're not really going to the bench. Remember this? If you ain't Dutch, you ain't much. Yeah, that's Luther Dickinson's signature right there. But there are a couple episodes that we've done other stuff with the piezo. Can you hear me? Here? Do I need to turn this up? Remember the cactus cooler one that we did before? There's an episode about how to do a tin can microphone right up there about right now. And going back into the vaults, we also have... Remember the stomp box? It has piezos in it. Isn't that lovely? Okay, let's go to the bench. There's an episode for this right up there right now. Right about now. Um, yeah, let's go to the bench. Okay, guys. I really hope you enjoyed that opening. It wasn't that profound, but it kind of gives you the idea of what we're after. We're after a trashy, tinny sound and give the artist an ability to make it sound modern or old or both and that's the beauty of this remember last time we put in uh, the jack hole so now um, we're going to wire this thing up now i do want you to notice that as i said the piezo is going to be underneath the bridge you see this bridge this floating bridge with the thumb screws i've got it mounted already so this is going to be right underneath there and i want you to notice that i always in my episode about how to ground strings 
I use this copper tape and the copper tape goes underneath here and comes drops down into here and comes over onto the neck board and then I'll put a mount over here a screw with a little piece of metal so we can ground everything and that's how I ground the strings but you notice that's not there yet and the reason that's not there yet is because I'm actually going to drop this piezo down about that much which is 4,367 of an inch or something like that or to make it really easy about four millimeters I'm going to take a Forstner bit this that's about just a tad bigger than that now I don't want to scratch this or do anything and then once that's done I'm going to cut a slot in the wood where the wires can drop down in I don't want pressure being put on this from anything so I'm going to get the wires in a slot and then we're going to hot glue gun this down so everything is in place I don't want these wires wiggling back and forth or anything like that so um, again, as I said in the beginning, these are available in all different kinds of sizes. This is a 20 um, millimeter. Do you know how many inches that is? I don't know, and I personally don't give a... And then there's 27. You get these up to 40 or whatever you want. Um, last thing is, some people like to mount them on the side of the box. Some people like to mount them up here towards the fretboard. But again, I always like to put them directly under the uh, floating bridge um, you'll see here that when this is done the artist actually wants this is a cool flag coil pickup he actually sent me this um, it's going to ride the um, in here somewhere more towards the bridge rather than typically what I put them up put them up towards here so um, I'm going to make sure that everything is shielded good and there's some distance here between um, where this is mounted and I'm going to move this up a little bit um, anyway let me show you how to put this in oh I forgot to tell you there's a loop going on of John Henry in the background Mississippi Fred McDowell Furry Lewis do rag and Bill Abel Bill Abel is out in North Mississippi um, He's very active, plays, still plays a lot, and he makes killer pottery. Some of the cups that you see on my shows are made by Bill Abel. Anyway, what I've done here is I've basically taken this and slid this back a little bit where I can see what's going to be lined up. I've got these old pieces of cutoffs back here. Make sure that's lined up. Now I'm taking a straight edge and basically putting it there like that. Yeah, there's the do-rag version of John Henry. And first time I talked to Bob, I... Bob Log is playing the guitar on that. I, I asked Bob, you know, this sounds incredibly like one of the versions that Mississippi Fred McDowell did. And I think it's the version, the live version that Fred did from the Gaslight in New York City in 1964. Anyway, so I've got a mark. I know where that bridge is going to be here. And then I'm going to come over here and we're at 38 millimeters. Again, I don't get. Let me see how many inches that who cares anyway man it's too easy to tear you clowns up anyway 19 is the middle so I'm gonna make a mark there and that's where my piezo is gonna uh, that's where my bit is gonna have to start right there to get it in the middle like so so I'm gonna drill a pilot hole then I'm gonna drill this in even before you start with a drill oh, it's easier just to take an awl tap that a little bit that's an oak board so it's a little bit tough. Remember, I'm not going to have to go very deep here. So I just get this pilot hole started. Like so. Now I want you to notice before I get going here, I, I'm not pushing on the box here. This, this uh, neck is going through the box, but it is supported by this cutoff here. And you want to make sure you do that. You start pushing down with these Forstner bits. Next thing you know, something's tore up. So I just take that point right there and drop it down into there did I find it yeah and then drill this down okay take 57 you caught me with the clutch set way too low I like to set the clutch low before you tear something up but it looks like this how pretty now 
I'm going to cut a groove in here because I have to figure out the pickup for this is on this side on the top side of the player. Um, and so I'm going to want this wire to come over here like so and exit out of here. And then I'm going to cut a groove for the wires right there. So let's get that out of the way. Oh, I almost forgot. Look at the sanding stone. I got to the exact size that I need to make sure that that hole is nice and smooth. Because you know these Forstner bits, they always don't cut perfectly at the bottom, especially as they get older. So one more time, I just give it a little blast with that. I want to make sure the sawdust and everything is out of there. Now let's cut that groove. So I'm going to take the box off to do this, which is a good idea. And I'm also going to use this opportunity to make sure that this is blown out with an air compressor and cleaned up real good before I move on. Anyway, so cutting this hole is just pretty simple. I want to tilt the saw a little bit like that. Once it's in there, I don't want to go any deeper than that. I want to cut it wide enough for the two wires. And again, I want it exiting on this side where the jack is going to be. Now I just take my chisel and knock this out. There we go. Now if everything's right, I can take a, a file, put it on the side, and just knock the edges down. I don't want anything sharp. I want everything rounded off because once this is glued in, I don't want these wires being messed up by anything. There we go. Now after and only after this is cut and ready do I want to do the tape. Why? Because I don't want the tape coming down in here and touching the bottom of the piezo and worrying about that. So I'll just lay this on here and then I can cut it off and do whatever I need to do and then go to work on putting this in. So I've got a very small uh, driver and I'm going to here we finally get to see what's underneath this mystery okay let's try that again all right there we go another mystery of the universe there's the tension pins that go underneath to those holes these are actually the string keepers and they ground everything so now I'm going to take a piece of this about that long I want to make sure that it gets down into here, I'm going to use my sens Mr. Sensitivity pink scissors. Don't say that I'm insensitive, please. I'm just going to take this, make a mark there, make a mark there. See how that marked right there? I'm just going to take this, cut along there like so. I hope you can see what I'm doing. I can't see. I'm going to keep this because I'm going to use it to wrap down around here. I'm going to peel this. Hopefully, this will go quickly. Because anytime I'm doing it on camera, it doesn't. Because I'm clumsy and old. Anyway, what's going to happen here is when we put this on here, it's going to make contact with this. I'm going to push the copper down in there like so. Let's get this lined up straight like that. And then you notice I'm not peeling it all off. I've got it, uh, the, the backing still on it. I'm going to peel as I go. Now when I get to this drop down right here, I'm going to take the tool and make sure, see what I did there? Isn't that remarkable? And I'm just going to keep peeling this off. And as long as I keep this straight with the neck, it should turn out okay like that. See, and then I just take this and level it out. This is going to be underneath everything, so you're not going to be able to see it. But the most important thing here is I've got... A string hole right there see that one right there I just keep pushing back and forth until I can see and it drops right down in here and then here's the important one right here do you see that I can see the indent of where that piezo is going to go right there I just take one of these handy little razor knives and I just go around like so. Actually, I'm not being as clumsy as usual. Okay, you see that? And I want to make sure that none of that copper is touching down in that hole like that. 
you see that's why I waited to put this tape on now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna find where my holes are for my screws that hold this on and tap them in like so and then I'm gonna put the cover back on and everything will be lined up there we go now you want to remember that these holes were all pre-drilled before we did this and as always anytime you're working with this metal stuff you just want to run over the edges and corners to make sure there's nothing sticking up that's going to get anybody but there we go clean one owner now i'm going to get the hot glue gun out don't ask me where i got the hot glue gun um, no, I didn't steal it from the house. Borrowing is not stealing. All right, hit it, Bill Abel. Okay, let's have one last look at this thing. You see, nice and clean. And then what we're going to do now, is it back in the camera? It sure is. So, I'm going to take our metric ruler. And you see that slot right there? That allows me to put this here. And this is about four millimeters deep this is not four millimeters deep so why did we cut it that deep well i don't want the piezo sitting on the very bottom of the groove because it will be i want it to be up a little bit more i want to show you one of my favorite things see this this is blue tape this stuff will protect you from anything it will protect stuff from bleeding off it'll protect you from getting varnish on your matchbooks can you see up there no you can't um, you could cover this paint this i mean you can turn it over like this and stop it from burning your fingers i mean this stuff will protect you from anything including sin so let's put this i'm going to squirt this glue right in here i'm going to try to do it even back to Fred we've looped around I've taken this stuff and watered up I'll make sure that's nice and flat there and I don't have to burn my fingers and I'm gonna drop this down I'm gonna make sure that these wires go right there in that groove like this okay now I want to make sure that nothing is sticking up above here above here I'm going to take my glue and make sure that that piezo is sitting flat like that. My blue tape. Great stuff. Okay, now I'm going to put a couple pieces of blue tape over here. Like so. Hit it, Fred. Anyway, I'm going to fold that one in half. Now, I'm just going to take this hot glue gun. And you see there's some... You see that down in there? I'm going to fill all that up to the top. And I'm going to want to make sure that I get these wires right here stabilized too. You see that? There we go. So I'm going to fill this up like so. And I'm not going to be shy about it. I'm going to make sure I get them wires in there. We're going to go all the way around. The only thing I don't want to do is have this stuff bleed all the way up to the top because that's going to affect how my neck sits. So I'm going to let it I'm going to let it sit cool there for a second and then we're just going to push down, make sure everything's okay, and then I'm going to put this here and let that glue set up like that. All right, while we're waiting for this hot glue to firm up I am going to um, put this in um, the secret place where it will not be found. All right, there we go. Nice and flat. Now, if something isn't right, you can always take one of these razor knives. I love these things. You can put the blade out as far as you want, and then you can just skim it across the top without cutting any wires or anything like that. So. That is good. We'll put that up. And then let's see what we do here. We'll just put this off to the side. That hot glue never goes away. Luckily, I had the blue tape to protect me from it. Anyway, knock that out. There we go. Put the wires in. 
like so. Pull those through. Make sure everything is good. And look at that. There we go. Now it'll be time to put the jacks in. I'm going to put the potentiometers over here up on top. I'm going to use um, a short. Hey, how you like my cup? right you know what i'm saying i'm gonna hold this here for a while so it will be this video's opening shot that's good yeah i don't swear so i'm gonna use this short potential short shaft potentiometers because i've got to put you see there's a lot going on right here i gotta put one there and there because there's going to be two but I'll get to wiring this up and you'll see it again before it goes out. All right, there it is. I still got stuff to do on that guitar. Um, why am I talking into this thing? Yeah, there we go. Because it's annoying. That's why I like annoying things. I like things like that I find annoying, like using the standard English system when you can use the metric system. Hey, metric hater, I love that one dislike I get every time. Um, keep, keep them coming. Come on, get me two or three next time on this video. Please, please, please. Anyway, speaking of, give me a like. Subscribe to my channel. You will be noticed when I release one of these exciting videos. And I will see you next time. Whew.